Welcome back to Squawk Box. Mild weather and low oil prices uh, boding well for some of the busiest travel days of the year. Joining us right now to talk about how this critical weekend or how critical this weekend is going to be uh, for airlines. As Seth Kaplan is the editor for Airline Weekly. Uh, good morning, Q. Let's talk oil prices and what the implications really are going to be uh, for the airlines right now. Seth? In the yeah, you know, in the short term, you end up getting a bumper crop of profits for airlines when oil prices drop. Over to medium and long term, what ends up happening usually when oil prices fall is airlines put more capacity into the marketplace, right. which is a perfectly rational thing to do. It becomes more of a fixed cost industry, become more productive, but that does put downward pressure ultimately uh, on airfares. But right now, yeah, people flying around uh, on tickets they bought back when oil was, uh, you know, was 30 percent more expensive than it is right now, and the differential between that, you know, those oil prices and where they are now goes straight to the bottom lines of, of U.S. airlines, of the, especially of, uh, those that are unhedged. Of the are. four majors, that's what I want to say. You said unhedged. Of the basically the four majors, whatever, whatever number you want to put it at, who is the best position given the way they have hedged their oil prices? Yeah, well, uh, Delta, worst. America, and United basically at this point yeah, uh, well, that's the easier question to answer. Southwest is, is the one that, that still hedges. So, you know, when oil was pricier, uh, that kind of gave them a buffer that the others didn't have. Uh, now you're in a situation where Southwest, uh, you know, although they don't hedge as aggressively as they once did, as other airlines around the world do, they still have an active hedging program. So this is best of those four for Delta, American, and United. Is there one airline right now you think that is, uh, as, from an operational perspective, that you think is just doing better than everybody else? Yeah, well, you know, Delta still is. They've kind of done that for years uh, and, and, you know, gotten to a point where it, it, it's hard to improve a lot more than, than where they've been, although they, they say they can. Uh, you know, United's made a lot of progress here uh, over the past uh, year or so. Uh, American is the one that's still kind of struggling to catch up. On the other hand, that, that kind of gives it uh, the most room for improvement if it's able to uh, achieve right. that as it says it can. Hey, Seth, most of the airlines are, are still acting like rational actors in that you haven't seen a huge rush of capacity someone just try to try to go out there and basically buy market share and that's what has happened historically uh, which has put it, a lot of pressure on airlines um, and this has actually been very good for, for airline stocks because everybody's acted this way but there's something almost irrational about the fact that to me nobody's ever tried nobody's tried this do you think somebody will well, United is growing a, a bit more quickly than the others, and, and uh, United's president, Scott Kirby, who a couple years ago came over from American, you know, has basically said, oh, look, this all went too far, and, and we're leaving opportunities on the table. So, uh, you know, they're, they're sort of growing more mid-single digits as, as opposed to uh, United or Delta, but certainly, you know, nothing like what we would have seen in past years. And, and they've sort of said there's, there's, there's such a thing as good growth, and right. that that's what they're doing. They felt like their domestic network was, was under scheduled. But, you know, this is a consolidated industry. And this is what the CEOs of all these airlines said back when they were preaching consolidation. They said, look, it's still going to be competitive, uh, right. but it's going to be an industry that can survive in, in any market conditions. And, and so right. far, they've been right. Seth, very, very quickly, um, the, the, the tiered classes, business first, uh, coach, in this market, given the volatility and also businesses and expensing things, if you, if you worry about a recession coming, do you have any expectation that, that companies are going to curtail the travel of their employees? Yeah, and that there is the flip side of what we've seen here in recent years. Uh, the, the transatlantic market has been extraordinarily strong, especially thanks to uh, that premium demand you're talking about. And, and, and in turn, that is what's most sensitive. So that's the kind of thing where, uh, you know, if you are Delta especially, you know, which has done so well capturing that demand, uh, it, it's Pierce American and United to, to, uh, to significant, if slightly lesser degrees, that's what you start to worry uh, more about. Okay. We're going to keep our eyes on that. Uh, wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Seth Kaplan of Airline Weekly. Appreciate it. Likewise. Happy Thanksgiving. You bet. <coughs>